This is my short, instructive part of this sermon. If you go into a Russian Orthodox or any Orthodox church, you will be confronted with lots of icons of all the saints. And almost always, at the very center of things, there is a icon of Christ, the victor. And almost always to his left is an icon of John the Baptist, and on his right, an icon of Mary. Sometimes they are all combined into one icon, but if not, then they are separate icons. And both John and Mary have very subtly sometimes their fingers or hands gesturing toward Jesus. This is called the deesis, this free sum. And you might want to write that down because that's the end of my instruction. <laughs> but it summarizes what these were weeks of Advent are all about. They are the weeks in which we per prepare for Christ, the ruler of the universe, to be in Rome. And they are the weeks in which we look to these two characters, John the Baptist and Mary, who are pointing to God's presence in the world. This is the second week of course, that we've heard about John the Baptist, indicative of his importance to the whole story. And in order to understand today's gospel, you have to have listened to the Old Testament lesson at the beginning. The Old Testament lesson is from Isaiah, and it is that glorious vision of of a pathway, a highway through the wilderness, which is the pathway of God's grace coming into the world. The, the book of Isaiah is filled with many authors who've written. And the first part of it is written to established kingdoms, the kingdom of the north and the south. There are lots of words of judgment. God is going to come because you guys are messing up. There's no justice in your land. You're not paying attention to the commandment of God. God is going to come and straighten things out. And your land is going to lay foul. And you are going to be a scattered people. That's the first, there's a lot of that in the first part of this chapter that we hear today is an abrupt change. It's almost as if he's addressing a different situation entirely, which he may be. And the situation he's addressing in this chapter that we hear, and in subsequent chapters as well, is that the people of Israel have been taken into captivity in Babylon. They had lost everything, their lands, their families, They've become slaves in Babylon. They've lost all hope that they will ever know their glory days again in Jerusalem. And to that group of people, Isaiah is proclaiming this message of beautiful hope. Don't worry. I know that there is a wilderness between you in Babylon and Jerusalem. Don't worry. God will restore Jerusalem and will make a passageway through the desert, through the dark place, to the place of transformation. Not only that, but this passageway through, while it's the desert itself will bloom, the jackals will go into hiding. It's not to be a place of fear, but a place of joy. Those who are lame will be healed and will be dancing. Those who are blind will be able to see those who are deaf will be able to hear. It will be a passageway of joy through the wilderness to the kingdom at the other end that will be restored to you. So that's Isaiah. He has, on the one hand, all these words of God 
coming into the world with judgment, and on the other hand, God coming into the world with promise and with redemption. So now we skip forward a few hundred years and get to the question of John the Baptist. You remember last week, John the Baptist was preaching by the side of the River Jordan, and he was saying, Repent. The kingdom of God is coming. It's here. It's near. It's at hand. Repent, because this Messiah that has been promised by the prophets is coming. And he's going to come with fire. He's going to straighten things out. He's already got this, this, this sickle in his hand, and he's on the threshing floor separating out the wheat and the chaff. The wheat he'll take into the barns, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. This Messiah is coming, so you better repent and get ready. Now we skip forward again, a couple of years. And a couple of years later, John finds that in fact, he finds himself in prison. All his bold preaching has gotten him into trouble. And he's now locked up. And you know in prison you have a lot of time to think. And he's been hearing stories about Jesus and about the things that Jesus is doing. And he knows that he was the one who said, get ready, the Messiah is coming. And he knows that he baptized Jesus. But there doesn't appear to have been any contact between them in the interim. So now John is there in prison, trying to figure out what is happening. And so he sends his messengers to Jesus, and he says, are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for someone else? And Jesus says to him, says to the messengers, well, go back and tell John what you see. What do you see? You see that the blind are getting their sight restored, and that the deaf hear, and the poor are getting good news preached to them, and that that there is a movement started <coughs> of the healing power of God. Just go tell John that. So they go back to John, and we can imagine what John's response is. His response is, I get it. I get it that the Messiah is coming, that the Holy One we've been waiting for is at hand, and that he is not primarily coming as a judge. He is primarily coming as someone who is opening up the pathway through the wilderness. Primarily coming as someone who is bringing a path of healing and grace and love into the world. He's coming as a Messiah who is not so concerned with judging the world. He's more concerned about laying the groundwork for a kingdom in the world, a passage through the world. You and I, you and I, we are John the Baptist. We are locked in our own prisons of various kinds, and we long to be set free from them. But we long, too, that the Messiah will come to the world. The world is a mess. There are people who are in power who are despicable. We want the world to be straightened out. We want there to be justice, and there's not justice. We want there to be kindness, even in our own streets, and we run into all the harshness of life. We want God to come and just straighten it all out. We all have in our hearts a list of people that God should take care of. And I won't share mine, but you're not. We all want God to act and that this make this world a just place and straighten out the mess that it's gotten into, whether that mess 
is an international mess or whether that is the mess of your own life, of your own communities, of your own work. One God is true. And so we send in our hearts, we send a message to this Jesus and we say, Jesus, are you the one who's going to come? And Jesus says, look, look at what's happening. Look at the healing that's taking place in the corners of the world. Look where people are regaining their sight who have been blind. Look at how people are hearing a word that they could not hear before. Look at how kindness is touching the lives of people. Look at how there is a way to lead a life through this world. Look at how there is a path that through the wilderness that life is. And that path is the place along this world where kindness reigns and justice is being enacted, where people are giving their lives for others, where justice in small ways is being served. There is a way in the world that I am inviting, says Jesus, and you can be a part of it. You can be a part of this joyful passageway. You can leap, even though you feel lame. You can hear, you can sing, you can dance and rejoice on this pathway. That's what I'm doing in the world. The truth is that the world it's a fallen place. It is a dark place where powers struggle with one another to hold on to their own power. It was that way before Jesus came. And it was that way after Jesus died and rose from the dead. The world has not changed. What has changed is that this Christ has come and laid down a passageway through the desert. A passageway that you and I can walk on no matter how dark we may and fearful we may be in our own lives on so many levels. There is a passageway through. That is the passageway of Christ's teaching and love and kindness and forgiveness and keeping our eyes open for that which is that is how we see Christ coming into the world. That is what Advent is all about. To have all eyes open to see that Christ is